Hi, I am Erica Free, and I want to talk about my experience this semester with The Long Tail, the podcast community, and podcast promotion. So before I took this class, I knew very little about podcasts. Um, the only one that I ever really listened to was this one called StoryCorps by NPR. And I only listened to it because I enjoyed their YouTube videos, but they hadn't converted all of their podcasts into videos. And so I reached out into the podcast field and listened to them, but that was about it. But at the beginning of the semester, we talked about this principle of the long tail, which essentially is the idea that because it takes so little resources to produce a podcast, you can sustain it on a very small niche audience, 10, 100, 300, very small, you can sustain it because it really doesn't take that much. And so we talked about this idea and one of our assignments, the phases of this course was exploring that long tail, those niche audiences. And I really enjoyed this phase. Um, I thought it was so exciting that you could look into any topic and you could find a podcast for it. I mean, you could find a podcast for training your brain. You could find a podcast for learning Japanese, learning about introvertedness or stories. And we decided the podcast that I produced was an instant pot cooking podcast. So then I started looking into cooking podcasts and I found so many. I could cook with Paula Dean in my ear. I could learn about the history of food. I could learn about stories related to food. Um, and so this phase of exploring this long tail, just this whole area of media that has such niche audiences was so exciting to me that whenever people asked me, oh, how are your classes going or what projects are you working on? I was quick to mention the podcast, uh, the podcast lab and say, oh, I'm in this podcast lab. And people would say, wow, I had no idea that's a thing. And then 99% of the time, the next thing that people always said was I've always wanted to start a podcast. And then without any prompting from me, they would go and pitch their idea to me. They'd be like, oh, I want to do a mental health podcast with my sister, or I want to do a video gaming one with my brother. And I would just listen to them and I would get excited with them. And it's like, yeah, you can. And I would tell them it's so easy. Everything I've learned in this podcast class has shown that it, podcasts really appeal to that long tail. So you can produce one and it's the rise of the amateur. You really don't need that much experience. And so I had a friend text me and she said, tell me everything you know. You've inspired me. I'm just going to go ahead and start one. And so I'd say, oh, just get Anchor, that's where we started. You can just record on it, you can edit, pretty simple, but it'll publish on all platforms for you. And so this experience kind of gave me this opportunity to connect with people, with friends and family, and also to connect with this podcast community. And it gave me the opportunity to educate people about podcasts. And I only recently started learning about them too. So I really enjoyed that. And along with the podcast community, because our podcast was about the Instant Pot, that delved into a whole other very specific community. And one of our favorite episodes was one we made of this Instant Pot Creamy Dump and Start Ziti. And we loved, loved this recipe. And we found it on Pinterest. Um, it was a recipe from a blogger named Cooking with Carly. She has a decent following. Her pins are always repinned a lot. And so we made an Instagram ac account to promote our podcast. And without even intending to promote, we just reached out to her on Instagram, sent her a message saying, hey, we love this recipe, one of our favorites. We had so much fun making it. Um, and she has about 8,000 followers. Um, but she responded fairly quickly and she had listened to our episode because of that message. And she said she enjoyed listening to it. That got us fangirling a little, that she listened to an episode of where we made her recipe. Anyway, so we, um, in order to promote our podcast, we're like, hey, would you want to be a guest on our show? Um, we figured if she was a guest, she would probably post about it, and then it would have our instant pot to a much wider audience of all of her followers, and she said yes. And it was, our group just sat there like, wow, that was pretty easy, and she was very friendly and very approachable, and we were really excited about it, and we had a similar thing happen with another Instagram account called Instant Pot Cooking. Um, and she is the big name in Instant Pots on Instagram. She has 38,000 followers. Um, and we had just followed her. We didn't realize, but we have local connections with her. And we found that by, she posted a picture about a training class that she did. And we commented saying, oh, what did you make? Again, without intending to promote. And she, taught, she said what she made and she checked out our page. And so she asked if we were BYU students. And we said yes. And then I actually recognized her from a video she was in for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, and so I talked to her about that and we asked her if she would be a guest and she said yes as well. And so we're planning on continuing the podcast. Well, we've been in contact with them to have them be guests in June, which will increase our audience. And throughout this whole experience, I've learned that in the long tail, um, it's interesting because you can find these communities and these niche audiences and it's easy to connect with people. People like connecting 
with people who like the same things that they do. And so promoting becomes much more of a genuine process and it's fun and not that difficult.